my name is Megan LaFlam. I'm a senior product marketing manager here at HashiCorp. And I'd let Pete introduce himself. Sure. Um, my name is Pete Payson. I lead product management on the Boundary team. Um, while we kind of kick things off, and I know a few people are coming in, I want for first disclaimers, <laughs> this is water. We've got a big launch today, but this is water, <laughs> not beer. Um, and then second, I was wondering, um, could people help me with a survey real fast? How many people are here learning about Boundary for the first time? Could I see a quick show of hands? OK, wow. So a lot of folks, probably Vault users, I would imagine, interested in Boundary. How many people have actually kicked the tires with Boundary, playing around with it? Can I see a show of hands? OK. And how many people are actually using Boundary either for their team, personal use, or anything like that? So still some folks kind of getting up and running with it. OK, awesome. Always interested. We're, we're here to kind of talk about the trajectory of Boundary so far, and obviously today's big announcement about HCP Boundary. Um, we'll have a lot of content there, but I'll pass back to Megan to kind of talk about the... <laughs> the um, Thank you. Much. Yeah, about zero trust and kind of the origins of Boundary. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. All right, so context setting is always important when you're in these day-long sessions, multiple-day conferences. So Armand just touched on a bit of this, but I think some things bear repeating. About 18 months ago, we launched Boundary as an open source solution that's really focused on securing and managing infrastructure access to critical infrastructure, standardizing workflows for primarily developers, other folks who need infrastructure access, like support teams and um, app developers. And Today, we're really excited to discuss Boundary on the HashiCorp cloud platform. So this is a public beta of our Boundary offering as a managed cloud service. So really excited to give you an overview of that solution today. And then I'm going to hand things over to Pete, who's going to talk a little more in depth about the capabilities and show you a brief demo. So ATP Boundary is really the easiest way to get up and running on Boundary and automate how you can standardize and automate those developer access workflows. And so we built this with the core idea in mind to address the growing challenge around securing infrastructure in the cloud operating model. And traditional access models are really centering around that traditional network perimeter. So we talk a lot about this as you know, strengthening in like a castle and moat approach, where you're hardening the exterior of the network. And then if someone has access to that network, um, they have access to everything. And the idea there is that everything outside is bad and everything inside is good. But that really breaks down in the cloud operating model where you have infrastructure dispersed across multiple data centers, across cloud providers, on-prem infrastructure. And within those uh, data centers, you need to also have much more granular access and authorization capabilities than what's offered today. And they lack the traditional solutions today, whether it's your VPN, your, your Bastion hosts, um, sometimes even traditional PAM solutions with really um, high manual overhead to, to uh, configure those access controls. You lack the granular authorization needed to control access at that level. So in this shift to the cloud operating model, these approaches really break down in this distributed remote world, right? So cloud resources are distributed across these data centers, like we mentioned. And in that model, really, network location is way too brittle and breaks down super quickly. So in the zero trust security model, the focus is primarily on identity. So we're shifting away from location-based network access to logical identity and associating authorization and and um, access to that identity and what people can do once they have network access. And this helps secure modern cloud environments where you know, that, no that network location is ephemeral. It's constantly changing. And organizations need a way to automate that so that they can scale their cloud infrastructure effectively and also not impede developer productivity. 
which is critical. So at HashiCorp, we really believe that zero trust security is pr predicated on securing everything based on identity. So to do that effectively, you've got the four key pillars here of zero trust security to address. And when you combine all four, that's when you are able to authenticate and authorize everything, whether it's users or um, applications in the network based on what the, the identity of those things are and what they are authorized to do within the network. So on the far side here is really where things begin with SSO. So the concept of that human identity, ultimately this boils down to single sign-on and um, having that common directory. So defining that you have a set of d database administrators. Um, and this common directory of employees and the groups that they're in set the foundation for identity that helps to fuel um, the identity-based security that we'll talk about across the HashiCorp stack. And then moving over here to Vault, um, Vault provides that sense of identity where you can clearly define what is a web server, what is a database, what is an API, and then define authorization rules on top of that. So this allows us to say, for example, that we can use secrets management for a web server and um, can get access to an API with just in time, for tokens just in time. And then console is HashiCorp service networking solution. So that allows us to address the talons of which, which applications can talk to which applications. And it can really act as that central control plane where we define those central routing rules that say this API is allowed to talk to this web server. And then Boundary, like I mentioned, introduced a year and a half ago, is really focused on that human to machine access. And we'll dig a little bit deeper, since there's so many folks here are pretty new to Boundary, into what that workflow looks like for automating access. All right. So our North Star, if you will, in designing Boundary was really focused on creating that standardized workflow for remote access to critical infrastructure. And we talked a lot about those traditional access models that really lack those granular least privilege controls, as well as lacking the robust APIs that are needed to onboard and offboard identities and targets in a way that supports a more ephemeral approach to infrastructure management. So Boundary creates that standardized workflow for authenticating and granularly authorizing user access. And it does so regardless of where that infrastructure resides, which is critical. Supporting multi-cloud workflows, on-prem um, data centers, and it's automating and standardizing key parts of that access workflow so that people have just-in-time access to the authorized uh, resources when they need it, and also um, at the network level and at the, and at the credential level through Vault. So I'm just going to walk through the workflow pretty quickly. So first, um, we integrate with leading IDPs to enable that authent authentication into Boundary. And that's leveraging existing identities, existing trusted identities that you have through your IDP. And once we've delegated that authentication to Boundary to that external provider, the core idea within Boundary is then to allow those fine-grained authorizations to critical systems and infrastructure based on that role. And this is what allows us to really lock down services and actions that people can take within uh, the network based on their role. And then I think a key differentiator for Boundary is the second step around connect. And this is where Boundary really streamlines connections to hosts and targets by automating service discovery and access configuration as workflows are deployed or changed. 
critical in these ephemeral models. And the primary way that we do that today is through dynamic host catalogs. So this is key to automating the, not just the configuration, but the discovery of those targets. And a catalog is the way for Boundary to really act as um, a client to the catalog provider. And that might be any infrastructure provider, like today we support AWS and uh, Azure. Um, and then in the future, we'll be expanding those integrations to support other service registries, you know, such as console. And that automated lookup of um, potential targets is critical in the automation of this access workflow and standardizing access regardless of where it resides. And then finally, in the last step around um, access is really the ability to offer that just-in-time access to resources. And we do this in a couple of ways. So one is primarily Boundary serves as a proxy to establish that just-in-time network access and to the client and is really only allowed for the time that uh, the session is allowed to live, which is established by the administrator. And from there, the other is to integrate with a secrets management solution like Vault to broker credentials to critical infrastructure just in time and only allowed for that session. And so with those three key automated parts of the access workflow, you have a standardized way for developers to get access to uh, critical infrastructure very quickly, but also as for administrators, it streamlines the ability to onboard both users and targets and offboard them just as easily. So that's why we're so excited to announce Boundary on the HashiCorp Cloud Platform today. And we are now in public beta, which means that you can leave here today and try it yourself. Um, we're looking forward to getting feedback from folks as well. And we'll share some details at the end about how to do that. Um, but this also rounds out now our zero trust security solutions on the HashiCorp cloud platform. So Vault, Console, and Boundary are now available as managed cloud services. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to Pete, who's going to take things over from here and talk a little more about the details of HCP Boundary, and then he'll jump into a demo. Sure. Thank you, Megan. So I'm really excited to finally get to talk about HCP Boundary. This is something that we've been, we've been working on for quite a long time on the Boundary team. So the whole idea with HCP Boundary is that it makes the Boundary workflow, that kind of standardized developer remote access workflow, to their infrastructure endpoints available as a cloud service. So the big kind of takeaway with this is that it's available as a one-click deployment. It's easy to get that environment up and running. If you're familiar with Boundary in the past, you don't have to go through the process of managing your control plane. So the controller is kind of the underlying Postgres database. Setting that up in your environment is no longer an issue with the HCP um, Boundary Cloud Managed Service. The idea with this is that that offers Boundary's workflow, creates a standardized ways for the developers to access their machines. And then ultimately, from the administrator's perspective, you get all of Boundary's automated workflows around onboarding new targets and new hosts as they get deployed or changed throughout your infrastructure. Um, and in the same way, also automate the onboarding of new identities, potentially vendors onto your network, um, changed roles for given engineers, per perhaps when they go on call or something like that, where you need to um, just in time or, or on a dynamic capacity, assign that user a temporary role. All of those kind of automated workflows in terms of privilege management um, within your infrastructure you can get through Boundary's cloud service. So today it's available in a beta capacity. So I want to kind of go through what, what that means. One thing is that right now, because it's in beta, we don't have any kind of enterprise support you know, agreements in place. Um, and similarly, we don't have any production SLAs within the beta offering. Those things will be coming as we, as we move forward to GA. Um, but 
The flip side of that is that it's available for the low price of free on the HTTP Cloud platform where you can get started today. Um, all of our materials are already online. We've got a ton of different education materials um, out there, tutorials for you to get started with, um, as well as kind of some um, basic Terraform configurations for setting up your environment and the actual target onboarding and identity onboarding into Boundary. So another thing about these beta environments is that all will be fully upgradable to GA clusters. So what does that mean? When you go and you know, play around with HTTP Boundaries beta today, you can make sure that that environment, all of your state, all of your um, hard work that you've put into configuring that instance can be upgraded to a future GA production instance. Um, one kind of key thing about HTTP Boundary that we've been really intentional about designing for is making sure that it can be useful in the most kind of regulated use cases and for highly secure organizations. Um, there's a lot of hesitancies that we've seen from customers around moving to a cloud service for these kind of critical access workflows. And one of the biggest things that we've done around um, Boundary's initial design is in its worker topology and how you can manage workers yourself so that you don't actually have to grant access to your network to HashiCorp as a cloud provider. We'll go into that uh, in depth here. But I think before doing so, it's probably helpful to talk about, OK, what actually is Boundary? How does it create this access workflow? Um, and if we, we think about that as a whole, the whole value out of Boundary is that it's able to basically authenticate and authorize access to your production environments, test environments, dev environments, but it does so without needing to expose your network directly to the clients doing that access. So your engineers don't have to have direct access to any of the resources that they're connecting to like you would in an existing kind of VPN model or existing PAM model. And then similarly, they don't need to worry about the actual credentials needed to access those systems. Right? You authenticate to Boundary. Once you're authorized, Boundary actually handles the whole entire process of credential management through integration with HashiCorp Vault or um, actually as announced today, it's not in the slides, but we also um, added some native secrets management support for Boundary 09 that also went out today with beta. But the whole idea is that from an end user's perspective, that developer, they don't need to think about the IP address that they're connecting to. They don't need to think about the port of the service that they're connecting to. They don't need to think about the SSH cert or the, the um, username and password to access that end system. Boundary automates that. You authenticate to Boundary, you see your logical services, and you have a remote secure connection to that system. So how does it actually go about enabling that? And within Boundary, it's, it's probably helpful to think about what it actually is. It's, a, it's fundamentally an intelligent proxy that manages network access between the clients within your organization and then the target systems that you need to connect to. Again, those targets can be basically any kind of infrastructure endpoint. Um, those might be you know, a VM EC2 instance on AWS. It might be an Azure SQL database, like we'll see um, in the demo today. It could be a Kubernetes cluster on-premises. Whatever that infrastructure endpoint is, the whole idea is that it's, it's for these technical users, developers, DevOps engineers, and, and um, those technical users that need, need access to these endpoints. So fundamentally, within the cluster itself, Boundary has two different components. It has a control plane that serves its API, for those familiar with Boundary open source, um, you, might be, uh, you might remember that there's basically two components within that control plane, a set of stateless controller nodes that can be auto-scaled, um, and then an underlying relational database that manages state around what infrastructure targets there are and what identities there are and what their respective access permissions are. The advantage of this model is that you can get Boundary up and running without any kind of agent needed on your target system. So you don't need to bake an agent onto your VM or whatever infrastructure you're running for it to be able to be managed, or for its access to be able to man be managed with Boundary. So fundamentally, that control plane, when users authenticate to Boundary, they go and access that control plane. That control plane verifies whether or not the user has um, the right set of permissions to connect to the target that they're requesting access to. Under the hood, Boundary's control plane can act as a client to HashiCorp Vault to check out a single-use credential for a particular session. And then ultimately what happens is that that control plane um, assigns that session to a worker node. A worker node is a key step in boundary because that's the, that's the thing, the proxy, that's actually brokering the connection to that end system. So the clients 
the, the control plane, which in HTTP Boundary we host, doesn't actually have direct network access to wherever that target is. It's fundamentally the worker that's laid down at the edge of your network and avoids the need for clients to have direct network access. That, get, that connection gets proxied through those workers. And those workers are fundamentally a TCP-based proxy. So you can use Boundary to connect over any kind of application layer protocol that runs on TCP. So things like SSH, RDP, database access scenarios, Kubernetes access scenarios, um, all kind of covered within this flexible topology. The other nice thing about this is that workers are fundamentally stateless. So you can you know, auto scale those as needed within your different network enclaves. Um, and there's a whole entire process by which you can ensure that traffic to particular targets routes through particular workers. So let's say I have some PCI enclave or some particular VPC that I don't want to give access to everything. I can drop a worker in that network and make sure that routes only go through the relevant worker that has access to that outbound target. So in HCP boundary, um, one of the biggest things that I think is kind of critical to making sure that it's adoptable and, and usable in those secure environments is this flexible topology by which you can manage your workers. So option one is basically to have an HCP managed worker. So we will host both the control plane for Boundary as well as those workers. Um, and HCP Boundary will be able to auto scale to kind of meet the needs uh, of the demands of your system, both the, the users under management and the targets under management, and any sessions that you create between those two. The other kind of critical piece that we're really excited to launch today is this ability to self-manage your workers. Um, so the advantage of this is that you can have Boundary as a cloud service any time you have a net new network um, or some new private network that you want to be able to establish access to with Boundary, it's as easy as dropping down a worker, deploying a worker into that network, and peering it up to the control plane, and then brokering access through that worker node. The advantage being that should you want, you can make sure that no network access to your targets is given directly to HashiCorp as a cloud vendor or anything that you don't personally manage. So that's, that's one of the kind of the primary mechanisms for this. And in parallel to today's HCP Boundary beta launch, um, we also came out with 09 of Boundary OSS, which has a whole set of capabilities that are kind of peered into this or like paired with this um, beta release. One of those being the uh, option to have a new method by which workers authenticate up to the control plane. For those familiar with Boundary open source, traditionally there was a KMS-based auth method um, to establish trust between worker nodes and the control plane. Today we also um, announced the uh, new capabilities around PKI-based authentication, where you can basically generate a secure key on your worker node. Um, copy and paste that into your control plane, and then establish mutual trust between your new worker um, and your control plane. Or in, in kind of an um, automated capacity, you can generate those through programmatic constructs, whether it's our REST API or Boundary's fully instrumented Terraform provider. So that's a little bit about the workflow as a whole. What I'd love to see next is um, actually walk you through a scenario of using HTTP Boundary in a um, customer environment or like a hypothetical environment that we see many customers kind of run through. Um, just to kind of set the stage for this, um, this kind of builds on our HashiConf global demo where we had a Northwind product line. And I guess the scenario here is let's say we're administrators. We have to onboard a new data analyst to be able to access our um, sales database, which in this case is an Azure SQL instance running, running in Azure. So we'll walk through a scenario that basically combines um, multiple parts of Boundary's kind of secure access workflow to establish just-in-time access with single-use credentials and basically automated discovery of where that Azure SQL database is residing. So to kind of walk you through the process of this, um, the user will authenticate through HCP Boundary. They'll be able to authenticate with Azure Active Directory as an OpenID Connect auth method, basically as, a, as an auth provider for Boundary. Um, there's also a method by which Boundary can automate the assignment of user roles in Boundary based off of claims maintained at that identity provider level. We won't go into it in depth in this demo, but this demo is going to be fully available on GitHub for you to get started with yourselves. And the key advantage here is that you can basically um, dynamically assign those permissions. So based off of group memberships with an Azure AD, I can dynamically assign people roles which then give them access on a just-in-time basis um, to certain services within Boundary. 
The next kind of step in that process after the user's been authenticated and authorized is to perform kind of the checkout of a secret, a single-use database credential, in this case, um, for the target. So through this, we'll use um, HashiCorp Vault as the secrets management solution for Boundary. So Boundary can make an authenticated call to Vault under the hood and pass that single-use credential um, back to the user. So after they go through their session, that, that, that um, username and password will no longer be valid. And then ultimately, the user will have a secure route to the Azure SQL instance without needing to think about the actual IP or port that that Azure SQL instance is, is residing on. And the way in which we do that is through Boundary's dynamic host catalog capabilities, which um, is basically, as Megan kind of touched on, a way for Boundary to act as a client of an external provider and do an, basically an automated lookup of any net new services matching an administrator-defined filter. So it's basically a way for me to say, Based off that provider's metadata, in the case of Azure, I could say, for instance, within subscription foo of resources type bar in um, region US East, as an example, onboard all um, resources matching that description within a host set, and then basically um, assign the same permission and access policies for those newly deployed resources so that I, as an administrator, don't need to go and do any extra reconfigurations every single time a new resource is deployed or, or, um, you know, or changes over time. So this is the overall kind of workflow that we'll go through. Um, what we'll actually do in practice is deploy HCP boundary. We will configure this kind of topology the Azure Active Directory bits, the HCP Vault bits, um, and then the Azure SQL onboarding through Terraform, which is um, a, a common way that people kind of configure boundaries resources at scale. And then we'll ultimately access that resource through the Boundary desktop application, which is a um, basically low-code low way, GUI-based interface that works on Windows, Mac, and Linux systems to access your, your infrastructure under management. Um, I do apologize. It's not going to be a live demo because they wanted this to be scripted. So I'm going to run through this and kind of talk through it in advance. There might be things that don't line up perfectly, but we're going to work through it, and um, it'll go. So um, within this, as of today, you can see HCP Boundary um, actually on the Boundary portal. If I go in and enable a cluster, uh, Boundary fundamentally is a multi-tenant service where I can deploy instances really um, pretty quickly. Uh, all I need to do is give my instance a name and then an initial administrator account with which to bootstrap that access. After initializing over a short time, it takes about 30 seconds in real life, which you can do today at portal.cloud.hashicorp.com. Portal I can see my deployed cluster, which I can then access through the admin UI with that bootstrap user that I just created. When I go and actually access my environment, I can see that there was an initial auth method created for that user. I can take those auth permissions to then use in Terraform to configure my environment. So in this particular case, I'm basically taking the auth method, taking the username and password from that initial bootstrap user, and then just um, giving the origin URL for my environment to deploy a Terraform configuration against this boundary environment to get it up and running. So as part of this, I'm creating a number of different resources. I'm creating kind of a set of scopes for both my organization um, and my project product line. I'm creating a Azure AD auth method. Um, I'm creating a managed group to kind of provision users from their Azure AD permissions. I'm creating a Vault credential store, which basically allows Boundary to access Vault credentials at a given path. And then ultimately, I'm creating a target for the Azure SQL instance that I'm, I'm connecting to, as well as a role to be able to access that system. So again, all of this Terraform will be available, or I think is available. I haven't checked it. The team just rolled it out today um, on GitHub that you can get up and started with. And then after you apply that, you can, we can go back to the, to the Boundary admin UI and see all of those resources that we just created. So in this case, if I go back to the original kind of home page of Boundary, I can see the scopes that I've created. In this case, an organization that kind of governs the overall um, not just the global scope in this particular environment, but the overall Northwind product line. I can also go in within this organization and see the project resources that I've created. So in this case, I've got a um, project for all of my analysts infrastructure um, and their associated targets. If I go into that analysts um, 
project, I can then see kind of the targets, the host catalogs and credential stores that I've created. In this case, a target has been created for the database um, endpoint that I'm trying to connect to. And it has two different components, host sources, which are the discrete instances of this service that I'm onboarding into the target, as well as credential stores. So in this case, I've created an Azure Dynamic Host Catalog that allows me to automate the onboarding of new services from Azure. And in this particular um, host catalog, I can go and see the particular instance that has been onboarded based off of my administrator-defined filter. So within that, on the administrator side, I can see the IP and port that I need to connect to. That won't be exposed to the actual end user developer. And then on the target side, I can also see the credential sources for this target. That's fundamentally a vault path that you can see down here. And that basically allows Boundary to make an authenticated to call to access credentials from that vault path and pass those back to the users on a single use basis. Um, so if I go, I think, back to the overall environment, I can go to um, Boundary Desktop now, so this is not the administrator view, but this is the actual developer using Boundary as an access solution. This is, can be done through the CLI or Boundary Desktop. We'll do Boundary Desktop in this particular instance. I can log into my environment, authenticate with Azure Active Directory after that configuration, and then I can go and see what targets I've been given access to. In this particular environment, I was just given access to the Azure SQL um, environment, and then I can go and connect to a discrete host within that target or, or connect to the target all up. When I do that, Boundary creates a secure tunnel between my local machine and that endpoint um, that the target is fetched from. So in this case, the IP and port that I'm connecting to is just some local, some secure tunnel on my client device where Boundary's given me a single use username and password. I can then use that tunnel over any client that I want to actually connect to that system. So, went through a little bit at the end, but you can use that over your preferred database client, you can use that over your preferred shell, you can use that over your preferred like RDP client, whatever that is, to have a zero trust session to that endpoint. And remember, there's a couple pieces here. You're not getting network access to that end system. That network access that you do get through Boundary is granted on a time-limited basis. The credential used to actually source that, to, to source that session is single-use in nature. So you've got multiple different layers of security controls being um, enforced here to kind of create that zero-trust posture. And the key idea is that from the developer angle, it's the same exact workflow whether I'm connecting to that Azure SQL instance or whether or not I'm connecting to kind of basically any infrastructure running on any provider. So that's, that's really kind of the value add here um, with this workflow that we're creating. And with HCP Boundary, you can get that without having to manage your infrastructure itself. So um, before we kind of close out, I know we're almost at we're time at, here. I think we're at time. Oh, we are at yeah, time. Yeah, so Sorry. I think um, I want to <laughs> thank everyone for staying with us through that demo. Um, we, we're going to be at the booth today, at the security booth. Please stop by, and we'd be happy to answer more questions. And Pete's got a session later today with uh, Microsoft to go in more depth on this demo. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And we look forward to hearing from you more. Go to cloud.hashicorp.com uh, slash boundary, and you can sign up for beta today. Thank you.